<laughs> okay. I'm here with David Woods. David uh, and I chatted uh, a year or so ago. We discussed uh, a new group he'd started about the Caleb Seth Pearl books, KSP, which are related to um, a whole bunch of stuff. And the other thing that uh, David and I share in common is that we've experience in common, which is a kind of uh, non-dual energy transmission, which has really been astonishing for me. Um, so we were just thinking we're going to like touch bases again, talk about some of these ideas. And I was thinking, I, um, I think maybe for me, the best way of entering this is where my mind is at right today which is slightly not about those topics, but may lead into those topics. So um, I, was, uh, I was watching a video on YouTube, as you do, of a girl who I saw a few years ago. Um, her, she's got, she's got her, I think her YouTube channel is called Healing Divinity. And I'm not sure what her name is. She's done a lot of ayahuasca and this kind of stuff. But, um, but in her video, she talks about having a full Kundalini awakening through uh, meditating on the third eye. And I remember what it must have been more than three years ago. I remember watching this a bunch of years ago, thinking, "Wow, that's really crazy." I wonder what that means. I wonder what it's all about, you know. And um, and she discusses how she was listening to a, a guided meditation of all things and started feeling like something funny on her head. So she stopped meditating and, and looked up online, and it seemed like that made that just stick with that. So she turned off the, the meditation and just started focusing on this funny feeling. And lo and behold, boom, full Kundalini awakening, you know? It's just weird. Um, and I guess the reason I'm bringing this up is because it's one of these, um, it's one of these things that comes up with me all the time because it's, it seems distinct in some ways to what Rasa is. And to me, I, so I'm just trying to get like other people's perspectives on, on that kind of thing. Um, I also have had that kind of experience where I feel something, I feel an energy and I move into the energy and it becomes all like orgasmic and, uh, but not orgasmic, like uh, in the, like in the genitals, it's like, it'll be orgasmic here or it'll be orgasmic in the heart. And you know, it's like, what is going on? And it doesn't seem the same as what a lot of people talk about as enlightenment or Rasa, for example. So like with the Rasa style of things, or with the non-dual style of things, it's it's almost more of a sort of philosophical. You hear people talking about rasa or non-duality, and they're not talking about oh, I feel orgasmic in my head. They tend to be like, it, it's almost like um, hmm. they're like not you know nothing is real, nothing. The subject is not the object, and you're like, what is going on? And I'm just yeah. wondering, like you've I know you've had a bunch of like meditative experiences and other experiences, and you um and uh, medicinal experiences and um yeah what do you think what do you think that what do you think's going on there with those different styles of awakening uh it goes back to people are slowly starting to let go of the bullshit that they've been taught about how to approach things and when they do that, when they let go of all the, the baggage that they're carrying, life happens to them naturally. It cannot help. Life wants to live. Life wants to express itself. And so that kundalini that that lady experienced there, you know, it was trying to get through. Life is always like that. Life is trying to get through. The, hmm. the problem is people are paying attention. They're, th they're thinking that it's bad. So they're not allowing themselves to be who they are naturally. And when she put down, she stopped the meditation tape, the guided meditation said, and she was just curious. What is this shit? And she, she, what she was doing was, is she was allowing life to move through her. And suddenly she had these orgasmic experiences as you would describe them, but, but 
you know that that's just one word for for it and it, it's certainly and that, well but that's the that's is actually the perfect word because it's incredibly pleasurable it feels good and that's the, that's one of the keys is, is it feels good to allow life to flow through you and oftentimes we've been we, we since we were little yonkers you know little kids we were taught oh this way this way this way you know and and it wasn't true <laughs> half the time and we, we're also uh given labels you know this is good this is bad you know <laughs> the only way is through the catholic church <laughs> the only way right. is through the jewish faith the, you know you have to do this or you have to suffer for 50 years before you can be blissful or, or whatever it is and that's simply not true <laughs> it can start right now and in, in this moment and it starts with you letting go dropping all your bags of shit and allowing life to flow through you um, i really like that i really like that allowing life you hear a lot of people talking about this but it's like um we seem to be motivated not to not to do it. It's like we want to do something else. We've got all these ideas about what you're supposed to do in life. Is that it? I don't know. Well, that's one of the things. I, I'll relate this back to KSP. Okay. Um, KSP wrote, has six books. And the first three books talk about the tyranny against human consciousness, where we have been taught a bunch of shit. And most of it's wrong. Most, it's, a lot of it's incomplete. We've only been told part of the story. And we have to get rid of those beliefs, those thoughts, and dump them before we can allow other things to come through. And um, it's to a certain extent, it's not our fault. It's not our parents' fault either. Our parents, we, as young children, we get most of our beliefs from our, our environment, from our parents who got them from their parents. And, and you can't blame them because they were taught wrong. They, they, they didn't know any better. And so your parents shared, <laughs> shared their baggage with you <laughs> and you have to be willing to let go of everything uh, uh all your beliefs about what you think is right and wrong Rumi had a great saying and, and it's one of my favorites by Rumi he said beyond ideas of right and wrong there is a field I will meet you there in fact, that's the only place that people can truly be met is beyond these ideas of right and wrong. And that lady, when she decided she had this curious thing, she dropped all ideas of right and wrong about this, this third eye. <laughs> will it lead me to the devil? What will I see? Oh, my God. Ah. She, she dropped all of her any idea that she had and she just allowed it to go and she went to that field and that field yeah. was openness curiosity life and life wants to express itself oh, and uh yeah still there, i bro? did here hang on a connection right let me see yeah it's it's an internet still connection. Here. here nice. hang on hang on all right here we go now we're back again. nice <laughs> yeah so we just lost the connection but what david had been talking about is i know and it's really good i, I don't know i'm just in the zone today just listening to you man it's really good like you were talking about the um the curiosity and the willingness to leave behind all of the bullshit to uh connect with life as it's emerging now um yeah. as you were talking there was a couple things one of the things you mentioned the ksp book uh tyranny against human consciousness and um yeah, yeah. you've read the, you've read all those books and i'm just wondering like if 
I mean, this is the big question, dude. So <clears throat> if life is emerging, the pure truth of whatever is emerging in this moment, then what what is the tyranny? Who like like how are we getting things wrong all the time? Like, like if it's not our parents, it's not us, then who is the tyranny? Who's who is where is the tyranny coming from? The tyranny against human consciousness. What what does that mean? What does it well, mean? Well, there are KSP uses the terms controllers. There, there, there is an elite group of people that are, in a sense, trying to limit. Uh, they, they want us educated to a certain extent. They want us educated in a certain way so that we'll work for them <laughs> and 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 uh, give them what they want. You know, if you. Uh, do some form of research. It's not difficult to do. I could I could point you to uh, a couple of places. Uh, specifically, Catherine Austin uh, Fitz. She uh, she's really good. She does the Solari report, and she talks about um, a, a group of global elites who essentially own almost 90 percent of what's going on in the world if you if you look there are basically three or four fund managers that control a significant uh, i i mean a majority of the wealth that's owned in the world and there's you know so those are that's part of it but it also includes the catholic church you know, most institutionalized religions, Islam, um, uh, the Christian right, you know, it includes those groups that leave out significant parts of the truth as it relates to our nature, the nature of humanity, and our abilities and how we create our reality, how we, we, the, what, most people don't we've been taught that the world is material that the, the earth is uh uh inert <laughs> the sun is inert you know it's just a bunch of chemicals <laughs> burning it's gases you know <laughs> the earth is just a bunch of rocks <laughs> just happens to have this you know on it you know uh, there's stars, there's billions of stars, billions of stars, but we, we're separate from all of them. We'll never see them. We'll never or never get be able to touch them, all this stuff. Um, so we're taught all of these things. We're, we're taught that we're separate from the universe that we happen to inhabit, but we're not. There's an interactiveness that exists with reality. It feels... It looks solid, you know, it, it looks solid, but it, it, scientists, physicists tell you that there's a huge gaps in all the atoms <laughs> and it, this appearance of solidness of this cup of coffee is, is, is just an illusion to a certain extent. And but once you start to play, get outside of the fact that that life, the universe is conscious. Universe is consciousness, and it takes a form. And the, so this consciousness took the form of a cup. We took the form of a human being. Our consciousness took the form of a human being, and just the way that I took put on a set of clothes consciousness put on david wood what what appears to be david wood <laughs> you know and so and when it and when i uh what we call death is simply the consciousness changing clothes you know it's like no this is a dirty shirt <laughs> this thing's old and threadbare throw it away <laughs> okay <laughs> you know and you'll continue to to exist in fact it's super easy to access that consciousness 
you want to you want to experience that do you want to have all your friends on their access this consciousness that's eternal it's always with you take your hand place your awareness in your hand just do that place all of your awareness in your hand and what do you notice What, what are you aware of? I'm noticing the, uh, yeah, this is the thing, because you want to say it's the sense of touch, but you're not touching anything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And you want to say, well, maybe it's like, the thing is, what is it? It's a bunch of things, which, it's what, almost What's the like, first thing that comes to your mind? You're thinking about it too much. Touch. Just tell, touch. Tell I was thinking touch. I was thinking okay. it's the sense of touch but I don't think that's what it is. Okay. See, it's like energy. I, huh? What it's energy. All energy. Right. That's it. That energy that you're feeling, that sense of, some people feel a buzzing. Some people feel this, this kind of vibration sort of thing, but they definitely feel, and mo most people feel uh, an energy and th they can describe it in different ways. Well, that's that buzzing that energy that's you that's the eternal you <laughs> that's the you that will exist after you let go of this body <laughs> and that's the consciousness that that creates everything and it's right there it's in your freaking hand it's in your hand and people aren't taught it and then it becomes an, an a, you, you had this i can't remember the name of the guy uh robert bruce or somebody who who does this energy thing run the energy up your arm to your and on the other side run it from here to here yep. you know yeah and and that's it's actually a great exercise because it, but he calls it energy but really what that is is your awareness it's your consciousness and it's you and all you're doing is you're becoming aware of you the eternal you and people don't recognize that it's kind of the secret that protects itself and the yeah. reason the reason that you haven't been taught this is because the people that are controlling this universe don't want you to know about this shit. <laughs> they don't want you to know. Why? Because they're jigs up. Because suddenly you're not going to go to that job and trade your time <laughs> for money, which is paltry in, 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 in the big scheme of things, you know? So, yeah. um, so the first thing is is to get rid of all of those notions about right and wrong get rid of all those ideas of what things are and start to experience them see that's yes. what, when that lady dropped her her thoughts about this and she said that's just weird i want to pay attention and so she focused her awareness there and guess what she discovered herself she yeah. discovered consciousness and then you start to and from there everything you, the old ideas start to collapse you've started the path and it's irreversible once you start it it's it's impossible to go back once you discovered this and you start to play with it you're on the road you're on the road to discover greater things. Like, for example, you can start to discover that the you, the, the you don't end at this body. You're actually part of the entire universe. You're connected to it. You're inseparable from everything. And it's interactive. It's not a solid fixed thing. It's an interactive thing. And you can sit down there and start to recognize as you start to develop these synchronicities things start to come to you and you go 
God, I wonder what's going on. And the next thing you know, you, you're, you're kind of, you kind of forget about it. And then you come back and you go, oh, that's what's going on. You know, these ideas come to you. That's the universe talking to you. It's the universe, your own consciousness, your greater consciousness is talking to you. That soul that's been through not just this lifetime, but probably 30 or 40 other lifetimes. And, and you know, <laughs> the accumulated wisdom plus the complete connection that, it, that exists. So anyway. I like that little, um, it's funny, the little hand exercise, you know, it's funny, like, um, because it's, it's so obvious, and this seems to be the trick with a lot of stuff about consciousness, is that it's so obvious that we miss it, right? Yeah. It's like, it's like yeah. you're trying to see something really close up, and you can't tell it's a crystal. No, it's a, it's a point of white light. It's not, you know, it's just because it's so close, you can't detect what it is. And it's the same with that feeling on your hand. Um, yeah. When I it's, discovered that I was doing this, this, uh, I guess I was actually taking my cue from Franz Bardon, but essentially it's like Nidra yoga. And what you do is you allow yourself to feel the sensation in your hand. Then you allow your sense to feel the sensation in your arm. And there's like a bunch of ways of doing this. It seems like what you were saying about Robert Bruce is he's kind of like directing the experience. Oh, I'm going to move the energy here and move it here. And that's that you can feel it happening. And then if you get something more like Nidra Yoga or even Vipassana, it almost seems like you're just becoming aware of it. You're not trying to direct the experience. You're just becoming aware of this sensation. And it's funny because like if you think about that sensation in your hand and it's it's like a gestalt, it's like it's like a sort of a feeling of life, as you said, right? It's like life. Right. And I know like in Vipassana, one of the things they do is they're like, okay, you try and feel like, okay, where's the skin? Or how does the skin correspond to that vibration? How do the bones correspond? And you sort of go sort of granularly into it, try and sort of to allow your, to sort of engage the mind in the experience of the emerging reality of sensation, I guess, right? Which, which is really cool, man. It's really cool. Well, the, the, the thing is, is you can think of the body as a container, right? You know, mm -hmm. the, this is a container. And the important thing is not the container. The important thing is what's in it, you know? And like, like for example, coffee. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm done. I may have to pause the, the meeting just to get another cup of coffee. Right. But, uh, <laughs> you know, I got a the, bit left. I've got a little bit left here. So. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, so the important thing is the container and being aware of the you that's in your container. Now, when you're, you're, going, you're going to become aware as you start to place your awareness in your body, it, you start with your hand. You can, you can start anywhere, but start, you can start with your hand. And then you spread your awareness so that you're aware of your entire body. You're going to observe... Um, vibrations and sometimes they're big and my wife sometimes calls them earthquakes you know yeah and and i feel them as, as disturbances and usually the that's that those are um just simply uh thoughts and feelings and and reactions to events that we have stored in our body you know we, our our, her grandmother, this is how old this wisdom is. Her grandmother, Nona, <laughs> <clears throat> Nona was not her real name. Her real name was Mary, but, but <laughs> she said the body remembers everything. <laughs> and, and that's true. That's what, that's just because that's where we store a thing, uh, store our awareness in our soul temporarily while we choose to maintain this form and that and that's the important thing to also remember it's only a form right you can change forms eventually the so as you become aware 
of that, you can start to unwind certain things. You can start to uh, travel back and start to, to unwind those disturbances. And, and you can observe shifting in your, in your own vibration. And uh, for example, when you have those little thoughts, you can be thinking about something, whatever it is, uh, being beat up as a little kid uh, when, when you were going to school and, and suddenly a, a kid out of nowhere pushes you down and, and, and hurts you, you know, something along that line. Or your parents yelling at you or your father whipping you or, or some negative event you can feel that vibration in you. And as you sit with it, don't judge it. Don't try to hide from it. Allow yourself to feel that vibration. And then you can actually also start to love. You can start to love that little child. Just take a, just give that little child a hug and comfort. And you'll notice, a, start to become aware of a shift. And that, 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 that knot, that, that rough vibration, that, that this starts to go like this and starts to smooth out and it gets finer. And uh, oftentimes when I start a meditation, I can feel the roughness of you know, all the little things that you accumulate between the times that you meditate, <laughs> the, the, the 24 hours between your meditation periods, you can accumulate some just stresses. And you can feel those as gross vibrations. It's like this, boom, 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 boom. And then as you go through by the end of the meditation, as you just sit with that, allow it to be, you'll notice it goes, and it gets really, really fine. And almost to the point that you can't really tell that you're, you're vibrating, but you are. You're just vibrating at such a fine rate that, that you do that. And that, that's, in fact, that's one of the things I'm, I'm thinking about. I haven't made a specific thing. I'm going to, um, I'm thinking of setting up a, a, a Zoom meeting that everybody can join and i'm going to teach them to give an experience of vibration and resonance because that's that's really big with ksp and it's really big with many consciousness uh people they just don't frame it in that way in fact would you like to go through an experience of vibration Let's and do resonance open to that sure okay let, 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 let's do it right now and everybody good, that's dude. watching can follow along totally think about having a good conversation think of the word conversation just think of that conversation now when you're thinking about the word that word has a particular vibration all words have a vibration. All thoughts have a vibration. And just kind of tune in to the, the, the word vibration. And as you're doing that, you may want to go back and think about a time where maybe you were a youngster and you, you had a good friend and they were over and you started talking and you just had this marvelous conversation you kind of lost track of time. Time kind of ceased to exist. And you, you recognize, man, we're really connecting here. We, whoa. And you're, you're suddenly going, I don't want this to end. This is just amazing. And that's what a conversation is. You, 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 you recognize a good conversation has a lot more to it because what's there is, is a connection, a back and forth. You're not trying anything other than just to be in the moment and share your thoughts, even if they're different from your, the person that you're talking with. It's not about the difference. It's about the connection 
that the two of you have in that moment. And that, that's, uh, that's a sense of a vibration. Now, that feeling that you have, most people resonate with that. Now, let's consider a different word, debate. Let's consider the word debate. What that has that also has a vibration. It's a different thing than conversation. It's a different vibration. And you may start to consider it. You may start to feel different. You will feel different if you think about a debate. Maybe you sit down there and think, okay, I have to prove my point. I have to make this other person. Uh, see my side because I'm right <laughs> and they're wrong. This is a debate. I'm trying to prove my point and I'm trying to win. <laughs> and there, there's usually a little bit of tension. You know, I he's not getting it. He's not getting it or they're not getting it. She's not understanding. Damn it. She's not understanding. She's 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 persistent in this other idea, you know. And how can I do this? So there's a, between you, your home residence, remember when we had the thing on the hand, that energy that you felt, that's your home residence. That's your home. That's, that's your base thing. And so you're constantly comparing this because you want this, this always feels good and it, 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 it it's your natural state. And when you get out of it, you, if you move towards resonance like you did with a conversation, that feels good. That strengthens. You, you feel positive about it. But if you're doing like in debate, there's a, a separation. You're separate from one another and you're trying to win. <laughs> you're you're the trying to make that other person lose you're trying to be you're trying to be seen and you're the biggest thing about a debate is is you want to be seen and recognized and you want your thoughts and ideas to be recognized as separate and usually in a debate the other person doesn't see or recognize your points of view and they're trying to get you to see and recognize them there is a separation that exists and a debate is a vibration of separation versus a conversation, which is a vibration of unity. And separation feels is dissonant energy. And you can feel the difference in the vibration between the two. And the, the controllers of the world, they see... <clears throat> They seek to create debates. They want separation. Because when there's separation, you can't see. You're, you're trying to, to be seen all the time. And you're, what you're doing is you're not seeing that they're stealing all your money. They're stealing all your energy. They're stealing your life from you. And you're not focused on creating your own life for yourself. And so once you become aware of the vibrations of words and, and things, you know, it, it's like identity politics, you know, <laughs> Trump's right, man, he's been wrong by the FBI. That was wrong for them to do it. Those, that was a political fine. Yeah. You know, and then the other side is going, you know, he had top secret documents. You know, what does he need those for? Why, why keep those? They should be kept in a safe place. Anybody could walk in there. His maid could walk in there and steal secret documents. Who's to say that she didn't photocopy them and send them to China, you know? It's like, okay, that's, suddenly you see the distinction of separation versus unity. Separation. That's what the controllers want. They don't want you to get together. They don't want you to recognize. But then, so anyway, that's an experience of vibration. 
it's an experience, a, a unity experience versus a separation experience. And once you get that into your awareness, you're starting to go, where do I want to live my life? Do I want to debate people or do I want to have conversations? Do I want to, to, to do? Go ahead. I just want to interject something really quickly. That it's really interesting, your example there about conversation, debate. You could add argument on there, too, I suppose, at the end. Um, yeah. And what that is, is that's like two modalities of consciousness, two different vibrations of consciousness, right? Which right. Um, which are not apparent at first. At first, you just think it's words, and we you sort of live through the experience rather than identifying, oh, wait, these are different vibrational states, right? Yeah. Um, and that, what's really nice about that is that it's, What's really nice with that exercise is directly relatable to actual living experience. So, yeah. for example, when I was talking about uh, like the Vipassana thing where, you, okay, I feel the vibration. Now I'm thinking about skin. I'm thinking of bones. I mean, that's an interesting meditational technique. But it's for a lot of people, it's like, well, why bother? Right? Because it's not really directed to like what I'm involved with, which might be conversation and, and uh, debate. And then I've got a thing which I was teaching people for a while, which is similar to your thing, but it's different. You might find this amusing, is where what we would do is we'd imagine. So rather than focusing in the real world, the imagine your world, you imagine you're wearing like uh, a leather glove or sorry, uh, a wool glove, a wool glove. And then you imagine it's uh, a steel gauntlet, different yeah. vibrational state. Then you yeah. imagine it's Michael Jackson's glove, different yeah. state. Yeah. And then you imagine it's, it's O.J. Simpson's glove. And it's like, yeah. all of a sudden, you're like, wait a minute, get this glove off my hand. And yeah. it's, this, it's this tracing. It's just weird, dude. And what you're doing, you're doing the same thing, but you're doing it with, like, common conscious states, which are actually much more approachable for most people and probably more useful. Well, it is. Well, see, that's the, that's the crime that that's... Uh, going on is is that we've been taught to dismiss spiritual states and and not recognize them as as practical and beneficial in the moment in 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 your day-to-day -day life because there is no separation between your day-to-day -day life and spirituality you are a uh <laughs> it's because we've lost our connection to our own spirit and that's how come i start here you know connecting to your own spirit once you recognize that the the vibration that you're feeling in your hand is you your eternal spirit you can start to develop a relationship with a conscious relationship with the thing the um That's i awesome, posted it it's awesome yeah and uh, and and once that process starts it's irreversible you 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 cannot un uh, you, you, you cannot unsee something right <laughs> i wish i hadn't seen it you know <laughs> your parents having sex ah <laughs> you know <laughs> ah! traumatic for a little kid right <laughs> you can't unsee it and then you, and then as a teenager, you become saying, "Is that what they were doing?" Whoa! <laughs> and, right. and then the connection. That's how I got here. Wow! <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, so, yeah. but and it's you know, funny. It's funny just the idea of parents having sex, and it is like um, I know um, I had an ex girlfriend at one point who'd seen her parents having sex, and it was a traumatic event for her. You know. And then, you know, you think about your own mistakes that you've made, you yeah. know, like, oh, did was did, did they hear me? And yeah. it's like, and what it is, is there's like, um, there's, a, there's a tendency to quietly opt or to, to hide. We're trying to hide this aspect for whatever reason is funny. And why? Because you see, I think this is where the tyranny of consciousness comes from, potentially, is like, it's from the hiding. It's from yeah. hiding the intimate, vulnerable part. Yeah. And why? Why is, is that right? Is that you, maybe that's not where I'm from? Oh. I don't know. That's just see there. 
ultimately on this journey what you end up discovering is is that the 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 in the outside world and in, in, in the world that we see you can see um people fighting republicans against democrats you know that sort of thing the the vaxxers against the anti-vaxxers the the this against that and you, you can see that division. And after you stop, start to let go of that outer thing, as the outer world and that, that, that identity politics and, and all of that bullshit, you start to let go of that. You start to pay attention to the inner self. The, the things between the ears. And that's why so many people like ayahuasca, you know, is it's like, hey, listen, there's a lot going on between here, you know, and I, I need to get a handle on that. So they 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 try to they try to take a drug to perceive more of that. But they 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 don't need it's not that ayahuasca is bad or isn't helpful because God knows we we've we've traveled that route. But you don't necessarily you don't need it you just need to start paying attention and what what you end up finding is you start to explore between the ears you start you start to recognize that you've divided yourself you divided yourself into separate parts and you can start to recognize it where you make judgments about oh this is bad you know i wish i could lose weight i'm so fat <laughs> you know or <laughs> I should exercise more. <laughs> I want to have a hard body, you know, or she's beautiful. I want to, you know, all of these sorts of things where, which is a, is an interesting sort of consciousness, you, you know, it's, it's like, yeah, I want her and I want, you know, versus the unity that you have in a conversation, right? There's a totally different mindset between having a relationship with uh, another person and where you're trying to obtain sexual favors versus a relationship where you're trying to form a unit, a, a single family sort of a thing and uh, develop a long-term relationship. That's a totally different vibe. That's like a conversation and a debate, right? It goes back to, there's a separation. I'm trying to get something from you, <laughs> you know, versus I'm trying to share. There's a difference in sharing a conversation and, and, and it's not about you getting something from something else. It's about sharing, sharing uh, um, a, a love and intimacy on a physical basis, but even more so the, the physical part is just an expression of something even deeper which is a, a connection of consciousness and a connection of souls and so anyway yeah you can start to pay attention to that stuff but you start to recognize after a while that we have divided our own self and then the unification, and that's what that's where the own yourself series. The the first three books deal with recognizing that you've been controlled, and most of what you've been taught is incomplete and wrong. And start to see that, because once you see it, you can't unsee it. Then the second set of, of three books start go through the unification, the reunification of self, recognizing where you've divided yourself, separated yourself from yourself, and to reunify the, the self that is you, the eternal you, with all your different parts so that you talk, to, uh, work together as a single unit. You know, you, you don't have a part of yourself hating another part of yourself, like, I'm so fat you know, or uh, I'm getting old, or I, I have gray hair, you know, so I have to hide my gray hair. Um, 
you know, all of these sorts of things that that people do to separate themselves out and you stop playing that game with yourself. And when you and when you ultimately do that, then you can have a real relationship with someone else. And you can start life. You can start living life. You think that's important? Like um you often hear people talk that way, like um you've got to take care of yourself before you can start having a real relationship with somebody else, or whatever. Uh, I'm inclined to think that, you know, the 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 process that the actual process can be done in a relationship too. Like you said, I, I, I think a lot yeah. of a lot of women tend to be cut. A lot of women tend to be more, and this is a gross generalization, but they tend to be more focused on on um, uh, bettering themselves. I think as men, I tend like tend just to work, and you actually women of their women's groups, they're trying to like do self improvement, and they're doing all this stuff, and and oftentimes you'll hear women particularly talk about that kind of aspect, like you know you got to make yourself better before you can have a real relationship or whatever. And they, I don't, I don't really buy that. I think it's like. Um, uh, I mean, maybe it's true. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I sometimes think, you know. Well, I, I, here, here's the thing that uh, uh, I agree with you. I think it, you don't need to be complete to start having a good relationship. What you need to do, and this is where the practicality of the vibration exercise, conversation versus debate, you know, kind of a thing, recognizing where you are in terms of a relationship and how you are responding, okay? Recognize that you are a point of consciousness. You are a point of consciousness. That consciousness is found here, right? And so you're a point of consciousness and you're in relationship the way that I am in relationship to you. We are having a conversation and we're doing this. Now, if you wanted to debate me and argue with me saying, David, this is bullshit. <laughs> that's not your consciousness. That's just that that's just an experience of a thing. It's nothing more. <laughs> right. You know, <clears throat> we're not going to get very far in our relationship, right? You, 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 you're just going to, there's going to be, there's a separation here. And the, so let's say uh, uh, a woman, uh, she will, when she starts to have a relationship with a man, there's, she's going to quit. She quickly recognizes there, there are two types of men. There are men that want to use her <laughs> to pleasure themselves. And there are men that want a real relationship. And she can feel the difference in the vibration. She, 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 and some women don't mind being used. Some women want to be used. Some women want to trade. They want to trade security, you know, for sexual favors, you know. They, they don't want a relationship. And, and invariably, they find men that like uh, similar things that want to have a trade, you know. Um, and then there are other uh, men and women that, that want to have a connection that is not based on trading but on sharing each other's and learning and and coming to the relationship oh that's an interesting idea what what about this your hand that that's consciousness that's cool can we play with that you know and so you start to go through oh hey just put your awareness right there what do you feel whoa that's cool now just sit with it. Watch what happens. I'm starting to see visions now. You know, <laughs> Shiva just showed up in my doorstep. <laughs> you know, uh, you know. So suddenly you're sharing. Uh, your relationship is about sharing experiences and sharing and having experiences together where you're mutually supportive of your own um, uh, individuality and you're sharing your individuality to enrich not just yourselves but them and the whole experience 
you're creating something greater than yourself. And, and people recognize the difference in the vibration between those things, women especially, you know. I, and, and I'm not saying that, that, that having the, uh, a, a type of relationship is, is wrong, okay? I, I'm not saying, hey, listen, I'll trade you sex for, for you giving me a really nice house and everything. I'm not saying that that's wrong. It's just a type of vibration. It's just a way and it leads to a certain things and that may work for you and that's okay because I'm in the field beyond right and wrong. I, I'm out here and that's the way that you're vibrating. If that's the way that you choose, you are free to do it. Please go ahead. I'm not saying that the other way is better, okay? I'm not saying that sharing these things, being mutually helpful is not, it, it is the best way. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not putting one above the other. I'm, I'm not doing that at all. I'm just noting that there's, these are different vibrations and they lead to different paths and it, they lead to different experiences and you will, and you get to make the choice of how you're going to vibrate and how you're going to live your life. And recognize that there is no good and bad from, from that perspective. You just going through your life the way that you think is best for you. And God knows, maybe just having some really good sex is yeah baby <laughs> you know maybe that's what this lifetime is all about recognize that hey at the end of this lifetime you get to throw off this clothes and 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 maybe you'll try a different way of vibrating at a different in another lifetime yeah it's interesting what you're saying there about the um a couple of things are just the uh the vibrational correspondence between two people and um, what, what I'm saying here is, it's funny because like, <clears throat> well, I'm just thinking it's funny how those vibrations work. And like, for example, you're saying, well, if you can show somebody the vibration, this is yourself and they can feel that sharing. Um, for some reason, I'm thinking about this thing that happened to me a couple of years ago. I was dating this girl and um, we were very much in the same zone like uh, spiritually stuff and we're leaving our house going out for dinner and um we've got the masks on right and i'm like really anti-mask man i'm like whatever but at the time it was pretty much locked down so we had to have like but you know i'm but i'm gonna put it below my nose because i just can't breathe i'm suffocated i can't handle yeah, it yeah. And at, but she but she's a person who's very by the book yeah do everything and yeah. and she sees it is very correct and we must do this and we're leaving the building and in my mind i'm like if she tells me to put this thing over my nose i'm going to fucking lose it and the funny thing is you know what happens of course the first thing she says <laughs> is uh is put and i'm like and i just and it's funny because in practice this is the difference between meditating and in practice in hindsight, I wish I could have like, oh no, I understand this vibration. I understand. I see where this is coming from. Right? But in practice, it's just like that there's any there's pre-existing energetic pathways which want to be expressed for some reason. And I think one well, of the things, I mean, yeah. Here's the interesting thing. Incidentally, this is what I was talking about, the universe being interactive. Okay. Notice how you created your reality. Okay, observe that in, the, in, in that particular. You had the thought that if she does this, I'm going to go ballistic. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the universe wants to give you what you want. Okay. He must want to go ballistic. Let's send him this thing. Hey, lady, tell him to put the mask over his nose. Okay. And suddenly the thought comes in because he wants to go ballistic. Let's see this, you know. And so suddenly you, you do this and you go ballistic. See, yes, hey, we created something here, you know. People do this 
unconsciously, but it's how the universe works. It's how reality works. And part of taking responsibility for your life is to control, the, to recognize and be conscious of the thoughts that you're sending out because the universe will respond in kind. And you also recognize that you have a choice. Ah, I was a little sloppy in my thought thing. Do I want to do this in this thing? Am I going to, to truly go ballistic or am I going to allow her, her thing for this moment? And in other words, I disagree. I think she's violating my sovereignty, but I'll go along. Um, yeah, and for this moment, because I really like her, and you know what? We get along great. And if this is if this is the worst of it, this this COVID thing won't last forever. Eventually, there'll be herd immunity. You know. Yeah. So, so you can start to you can start to sit down there, but that requires a giving of space. It requires an acknowledgement that the universe is interactive with you, that you're creating your reality. But if you don't know that you're doing that, if you're not conscious of it, if you haven't been taught that, if you haven't learned to recognize it then you're going to be caught in these loops that, that are created, right? You, you're going to be trapped in yourself and you're going to be constantly doing that. Does that make sense? It does, yeah, it does. It's always great to have 20-20 hindsight. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> why? why did I do that, man, right? Yeah. Man, it's funny. Now, you were talking about these controllers. It was funny when you were talking about the controllers. I was thinking of... I was thinking the controllers. No, I'm aware of like the financial controllers, the cabal yeah. who basically owns everything, right? Whoever they are. Um, right. But uh, uh, but some people think that that's spiritual origins, right? How, do you how, do you do you engage do you engage in in uh, fanciful? imaginings about what the spiritual origins of that kind of controlling thing would be well recognize that there is a spiritual origin to the controllers there's a spiritual origin to you there's a spiritual origin and it's like we have to allow the controllers their thing Okay, we, we, I, I'm not trying to fight the controllers. I, I don't want to, to, to engage the controllers any more than I have to. Um, and I don't, so I'm, you're never going to see Dave Wood out there protesting, you know, <laughs> um, and, and doing that sort of thing. I'm not going to travel that way. The, the, the best way to uh, uh, do that is to, take my take ownership of my life take responsibility for the reality that i'm creating and to do, to become conscious and and start to perceive how reality works right and once you do that you're taking energy away from the controllers because the controllers want you on automatic pilot they don't want you to be aware that by you thinking, if she says that, if she asked me to put the mask over my nose, I'm going to go ballistic. That that's creating a reality. That's asking for the universe to bring this in. Okay. <laughs> if you remain unconscious of that, if you blame her for, for that, because you asked for it. If she does this, mm -hmm. I'm going to do that. Okay, let's see. Are you a man of your word? <laughs> you know, you yeah. created that reality. She just played a part. That's all she did. She played a part. And in a sense, she answered your call. Dude, you're blowing my mind. Yeah. <laughs> the controllers <laughs> don't want you to know that. 
and they don't want you to start taking responsibility for the reality that you create. Yeah, blame okay. somebody else, right? Blame, it, yeah. blame, project blame. It outside, project. That's it. right. It's someone. It was them. See, <laughs> and 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 here's here's what the real deal is. Okay, you it, it it's nominally about money. <laughs> no, it's about power. Because when you blame someone else, you're giving your power away. You've just handed the keys to your life and, and your own power to someone else. When you take responsibility for your life by recognizing, if I'm in a shithole, I created this reality. How did I get here? You know? How did how did this happen? Oh, it was me thinking that I'll go ballistic if she does it. Now, here's the here's the neat thing. Okay. You can start to unwind that because there, there's an actually an exercise to do that. And that exercise is to go back and think about all those times where you really went ballistic and and, and go back and say, you know, how could I have done that differently? Let me reimagine myself instead of. Yeah, I know I went ballistic on this girl. I know it ruined our relationship, you know, and it could have been. I want to reimagine the fact that I did something else. And guess what? The universe is always listening. It's interacting. Oh, he wants to do things different. He wants to think about, oh, that's cool. Let's see. What other things can we do? Oh, he could have done this. He could have done this. And da, 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 da. let's throw all these ideas at him. And he goes, yeah. Oh, whoa. I could have just been patient and allowed it and just see where it led. Because this COVID thing can't last forever, you know. And so I'm going to pick that reality. And then you, that reality, moving forward, you'll start to to see things differently it, it's a way to unwind that karma if you if you want to use that yeah. term you know you can i think it's a good i was thinking about this technique recently actually which is just something like and it's a completely different topic but in chile where i live right now they're they're in the middle they've just had a constitutional convention they're writing a new constitution and oh, wow. um it <laughs> and there's and obviously the country's divided between like it's about to be voted on in the 4th of September and half the country's like, we have to like, Richesarlo, we have to say no. And the other people are like, no, this is the big chance where we can all come together. And I was like, well, what is the deal with this? And so I read it and it's very, uh, I got through the, I got up to like article 10 and it's like, I think what you'd describe it as probably is very woke. It's very woke about diversity and like all genders must be included and all this stuff. And I'm like, um, I'm not into that whole thing. And I'm like, dude, what now? I'm like, I'm like, okay, I'm the vote against the constitution. And that was like, but at the same time, there's very good things about it. I mean, there, one of the good things that will probably bring like more open uh, health system. We've got a good health system generally, but more free, free education, a lot of really positive stuff too could come from that. And what I was thinking is I decided that I'm not going to vote. And the reason I'm not going to vote is because one, uh, all those things are very good. And two, much like you're saying about letting the other stuff flow. Like, for example, if it's true that there are two genders and all the other stuff's nonsense, that will just dissolve naturally, especially with the especially with the coming economic crises that are coming in the world. Those those um, constructs, they don't need my they don't need my intervention like they're. The re reality finds a way, right? Reality finds yeah. a way. And when, when people are up against the wall, probably what's going to happen is um, maybe not, but probably traditional relationships will, if if they're so powerful, will will be the guide or not. But it's certainly not something I need to vote on. And it's like, it's kind of like the, what you're saying is just let things take their own course, you know? Well, I, I'm not saying not to vote. Uh, I, I'm not saying to uh, to to not. I'm not saying that you can't have a a um, uh, 
Reagan, I, again, this goes back to you're a point of consciousness and you're in relationship to, to your reality, okay? And it's oftentimes better to explore your the how you resonate when when i ask you to consider a conversation and how that vibrated and how that resonated with you and a debate and how a debate is now incidentally i'm not saying that debate is bad or wrong i'm just saying that it creates a vibration and it creates a thing and sometimes separation is helpful, right? It, it, because it, the compare and contrast of a debate is a useful thing. Polarities exist, you know, uh, north and south, <laughs> east and west. Those, those, but they're but they're separations. And but but by going through that exercise of separation thing, your your learning more about different aspects of a, a particular thing east and west right and so i'm not saying that that's wrong same thing with the but what i am saying is it related to your voting thing you can resonate you can using the conversation and debate you can feel into the vibration of a yes vote and how you feel. Do you resonate the way that you resonated with having a good conversation? Or was there a set of dissonance, an uneasy feeling inside of you? And then you can feel into a no vote. Did you, you want to pause the conversation? Hey, can we pause for two seconds? I have somebody at the door here. Yeah, pause yeah. Second. Nice. Okay, we're back. <laughs> we're back. So, as as continuing the conversation, you were talking about whether to vote, not vote, uh, yeah, yeah. vote yes, vote no. Okay, uh, you can actually use this vibration, this sense of vibration and resonance. Resonance is is uh, simply an expression of how you relate to another vibration. Okay, certain people resonate, which means a positive vibration. They 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 feel it in themselves with the word conversation and but they don't vibrate uh, positively they don't resonate with debate in fact there's dissonance they 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 want to get away from a debate okay my mother-in-law loved debate she resonated with debate she she loved it that was part of that was her point of relation that's how she related to it and the same thing over here. Some people resonate with conversation. It's it's the same thing with a type of relationship. Hey, listen, I'm willing to trade sex for uh, a, a good, safe life and lots of money. Do you think that that might be what happened with Trump and and his current wife? You know, there was a trade off. Perhaps uh, maybe there's real love. I don't I don't know. But it I'm, seems like I'm certainly willing to do that myself. I'm willing yeah, to trade yeah, sex yeah. for. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, but then there's others that resonate over here where they want to have a relationship that that uh, includes incredibly great sex. But that's not the, the thing. It's about the connection and, and the long term thing. And now I'm not saying either relationships is good, but what you can pay attention to is how you resonate with them, you know. And if you resonate over here on that side, that's fine. That's the way that you are. Same thing with the vote. Okay. So what you what as you pay attention and you you can use vibration to guide you through your reality and to create the reality that you want. And so when it comes to this vote, you can choose not to go high. Yeah. I don't I don't want to. I just want to allow everything to happen. Okay. Then there's the no vote. Eh, no, I, I don't resonate with that. I, I feel dissonance. That that's that's not yes vote. You know, yeah, I resonate with that, you know. So you you can 
pay attention by examining your own inner vibration that you access here by placing your awareness in your hand. So you place your awareness in your body and then you bring up a thought, a no, a no or a yes. And then you sit with how you're vibrating and how you're relating to that. Uh, it's easy to get a sense of this when you start to think of something really strong and emotional. Uh, my daughter used to date this guy and I wanted this guy dead, you know, and I could feel the vibration and <laughs> this guy's an asshole. I want, yeah. you know, and, and so you, you, you can really quickly get a sense of dissonance, you know, right? that's what dissonance feels like, you know, and then I can also go back to the first time I was holding my daughter. She was six months old and I woke up. I had a practice every morning where I would get up and I'd hold her and put her in my arms and I'd squeeze her just a little bit. And the first time she squeezed me back, she hugged me back uh, for, for the longest time. It was just me hugging her. But when she hugged me back, I melted. I, I, as I recall that, tears start to come to my eyes. I start to get choked up just thinking about that. I resonate with that. And, and to this yeah. day, my daughter and I have an extremely close relationship, even though at times she's a stupid shit, you know? <laughs> and <laughs> the only reason I don't murder my daughter at times is because of that, that connection that we had when, when she was yeah. sick. And, and that's, that, that's it. That's, that's an example of vibration and how you can, how positive resonance and, and dissonance, which is negative resonance, can guide you. And there's nothing wrong with either one, you, you know, uh, not voting, voting no, voting right. It's just a function of how you resonate with each one. And that will guide you through your reality. And it's the same thing with, you know, this, uh, your, your choice to re make a, allow this woman to want you to put it over. And you could say, you know, I appreciate that you want that, you know, but I, I can't do it because it just makes me uncomfortable. And, and I'm sorry, I apologize to you, but hey, you know, and that's the end of it, unless she wants to make a big deal. And she could have thought this way, okay, she could be trying to create a certain reality. And, and, and you have to recognize and, and honor this. She could sit down there and say, you know, if he doesn't put that over his nose when I ask him to, I'm just going to go ballistic and she goes ballistic on you and, yeah. and you know, oh well okay I know the limits of this relationship right you know yeah. And yeah so so you can start to as you start to develop this sense of consciousness perception perceiving these interactions that exist we're just a point of relation. We're relating to things vibrationally and how we vibrate. And that's all that we're doing to create the realities that we want. And our realities, who's to say that that your reality is better or worse than me? It's the reality I want. I'm choosing my reality. And you have the right to choose your reality. It seems to me, like that's an interesting thing about choosing your own reality. It seems to me that a lot of people feel that they don't have choice. Like, um, there's so many. Um, one of the things that's interesting is we're talking about looking at a vibrational structure and becoming aware of it and recognizing it. It's quite a meditative process. It's quite meditative. And it, in a way, it assumes a sort of... Um, uh what's the word it assumes a neutral aspect in a way of the vibration i mean maybe not completely neutral but kind of like uh 
okay, I can recognize this and okay, that's, now I see what it is. But it seems to me that in our world, David, there's a lot of highly magnetic vibrations. There's a lot of media and uh, drugs and there's there's a lot of like addictive forces being projected into the world. Like, and uh, and it doesn't give people, it specifically, I mean, this goes back to the controllers, I guess, it's specifically designed to not to entrap consciousness is nets yes. is magnetic nets of yeah consciousness in very far various forms some of them are media some of them are drugs whatever it is well you've just hit on what the controllers are are doing that's the tyranny against human consciousness that that exists you, you described it better than i could have right there in in that description these magnetic nets and because that's exactly what they are and they're 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 designed to attract your attention now another aspect of of things is is that we everything is about perception Okay. <laughs> sometimes this is all you see, right? <laughs> the, this. Sometimes you see this. Sometimes you see this. But reality is, is that that's all the choices that you perceive. And, and the controllers want to limit you to th this many, if possible. <laughs> and they and they really want you to pick this one, right? And so they 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 make this one look bad, and they 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 demonize it because they want you to do this. But but the the controllers are aiming to limit perception. Here's here's the reality. Times a billion, right? Right. These are the choices you have times a billion, and when the woman who started the meditation and she became activated here, she started to write, oh shit, it's not this, it's this. <laughs> and when she started to play with that energy and put aside this for this, life started to flow through her. And really that's yeah, what the revolution... Like it's Go almost ahead. like consciousness is waiting for you to it's funny because yeah. it's almost like it's yes. waiting for you to open the gates for it right it is it's like no 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 maybe and that's the aperture that's it that's ex consciousness is waiting for you to engage it it says man we're here for you dude we're ready just give us the word pay attention you know and the it, it's like consciousness is dialing into you all the time you are never ever disconnected from consciousness <laughs> it's impossible <laughs> and and consciousness is just waiting for you to pick up the freaking phone and have a conversation with it have a conversation with consciousness with yourself because you are consciousness you're nothing else. All of this, <laughs> that's your consciousness taking a form. That's all it is. This is simply consciousness taking a form. And right now I've chosen to take the form of a male man who's 69 years old, who's letting his beard grow and letting his hair grow and... <laughs> I'm doing that. That's nice. what I've chosen. That's the form I've chosen to take. <laughs> um, I had a few thoughts, but my mind just went blank there. Um, that's actually good. As you sit there with a blank mind, what you can do is you can allow your beingness and your consciousness to start to express itself. It's when the mind is always going and you don't have that still mind 
bit going for a while. That's how come I, I recommend that you start here, placing your awareness in your hand, because what you're doing is you're drawing energy away from your mind. And you're drawing attention because there's greater ranges of consciousness. If you think of the mind, the <clears throat> mind is a subset. Thoughts are a subset of this greater range of consciousness. It's just a part of consciousness. A small part of consciousness. There are ranges yep. of consciousness that that extend way beyond it. And as you as you quiet your mind down to zero, you can start to connect to and become aware of those greater ranges of consciousness. You know, you can start to like, for example, when you stop thinking, you you might actually be able to taste the coffee. You, you might be able to smell the flowers. You might be able to hear the bees and the birds singing. You, you might be able to feel the vibrations of, of different things. And might be able to feel the breeze blowing over your skin. It's funny about the coffee, because as you were saying that about coffee, and, you know, I've got an empty cup here, which I've had for 30 minutes. But as you just said that, I became aware of the aftertaste of coffee in my mouth, which also is great. It's like the um, one of those magnetic forces in our culture is to consume and not contemplate the consumption, right? And it's like, if you can just like contemplate, it's like the after the after shock of the consumption and then the the and then also if you can do that and maybe contemplate before you do something right well you can do it like i think this is one of the things like uh for people i sometimes think about people with addictive behaviors um because i've got a proclivity for drinking beer i love beer i don't tend to drink huge amounts of it just like three or four beers just enough to like I can't work anymore. <laughs> I can't work anymore. But the funny thing about it is, is that like it's um and I was talking to my brother about this. My brother's got a thing, and he was like saying to me, he's like, dude, he's like, I don't know what it is. He's like, uh, I'm trying to be healthy. He bought a rowing machine. He's like, he's like, but I'll walk into the kitchen and it's like, I gotta make three sandwiches. I'll just make <laughs> one, and it's like another one, it's another one. And the thing is, is well, it's interesting. Yeah. And this is hard to do, but because the energy of Whatever that energy is of consumption, of do it, like do it, that energy is explosive. That's like the neutron bomb, but it's it's like it's potential energy, but nobody, it's very difficult to contemplate it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because what it wants is yeah. that energy translates directly into action. But if you can just, if you can focus on it and, um, and uh, use it as a contemplative tool. Yeah. Very interesting. Very yeah. interesting because it, because it's so energetic. And if you can harness that energy just through contemplation of it, if you can harness that and move it in a different way. One of the things I've been doing, I, I've been working with this tantric teacher, and he's been uh, giving me some mantras and stuff. And some, so, you know, there's this mantra I'm doing now, which is actually quite complicated, just like the pronunciation of it. It's like, what? And I'm like, I always have to like try, I always have to read it first. Okay, I know I've got it. And then you get into it. But even then I find because of the complex um, rhythm of it, I tend to, my mind drifts. But what I do is I allow one of those sort of magnetic thoughts to come in and I cultivate that thought and I spin the mantra around that. I use the magnetism of, of, the, of the negative idea as the anchor point and that keeps it focused and just uh, nah, nah, nah. so it's almost like you spin you spin the mantra around the orbit of the magnetic idea and um see that's you playing know. that that's you playing with consciousness you know exactly that, exactly right it's just know, playing around right and, and and that's that's what we're here for we're here to play we're here to learn. We're here to have experiences that um, that that 
and you know so i uh, i have a tendency I, I always go back to that roomy thing ideas of right and wrong and and i'm in the field beyond that you know yeah it, it's it's you talk about the distraction of things well that that distraction can have a useful purpose you you can it, it, sometimes we have a tendency to view it as uh, lemons well when god gives you lemons make lemonade you know sort of a thing and you, so you start to recognize the value of these negative sorts of things coming in and as you start to allow the negativity to exist to have that it has a place it has a useful purpose in your life and instead of trying to fight it you start to go oh here's my next opportunity and here's yeah. my next growth thing and um you know those are those are all sorts of things that once you see that once you experience it and recognize it you can't unsee it and then it just becomes this thing where okay i i've got to cultivate this thing you know like with your brother making three sandwiches you, you know um he, he sometimes it, it takes just a matter of sitting with that feeling that's how come when when you when i i go through and i i say part of the exercise is to place your awareness in your hands and then you spread it through your own body you'll observe the vibrations well you'll observe thoughts coming in rather than trying to fight the thoughts push them away or the vibrations the negative vibrations the gross, the really earthquakes that start to hit you, the tension sort of thing. Allow it to be. Allow it to be, and then it starts to flow through you and pass out. The same way that consciousness, when you access that, consciousness wants to come through you. So all that is, all that negative feeling is, is life trying to pass through you. So allow it to pass through you. And then it'll leave you alone on the op far side of it. And, and But sometimes you don't want to. Sometimes you want to have three sandwiches. Sometimes you want to have that three beers. For me, it's always that third glass of wine. You know, uh, I, 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 I love wine. So uh, I, I know I should stop it too, but invariably, you know, it's like... <laughs> you know right. and and i usually regret it the next morning but you know what it's it's okay it's okay I, dude. I, yeah it is and th there are all there are consequences and as long as you can accept those consequences see no one's judging you it, it, it it's like you're your you are your worst critic no one is harder on you than you well, you know what? That's a, that's a division. That's the separation of parts. The you that's super hard that you should do this, you know, <laughs> discipline. <laughs> and the you that that wants to to live life to the fullest. And if that includes having five beers or six beers, if it involves going out and having lots of animal sex, then, you know, hey, there's nothing wrong with that animal sex is great sex you know uh so go out and have animal sex once in a while you know uh, they'll, they'll reach a stage where you can't have animal sex <laughs> do it while you can do it while people. you can right do it while you can <laughs> use it nice or lose it <laughs> use it or lose it that's brilliant man yeah um well, yeah that's probably that's probably a good place to to wind up because like we've been uh -huh. talking for a while i think we've got more to talk about actually so um but yeah we'll can we'll have another conversation uh yeah soon i you know this this turned out far better than i had thought that it, that it would i was kind of coming into this a little worried are we going to talk about something uh, repeat of the last conversation no it is totally different no, no it's good and right. we didn't even get to Rasa. Which, I know. 
And so we do have something else to talk about once we get there. <laughs> exactly. That's what I'm thinking. Um, All right, dude. I'm, I'm just... Hey, listen, you take care. Uh, um, I'm going to pause the recording. <laughs>